Hi folks, it's Bob from Mountain Crest Farms. Oh, this is such a pretty day. The sun's coming up. Uh, a little bit later than usual, I guess you can see the sun on the side of my face. And you usually don't see that in the morning. But it's a beautiful day. And that's a shame because this video is going to be a bit of a downer. Not a huge downer, but a bit of a downer. Now, some of my regular viewers out there are pretty smart folks and with what I'm fixing to say you might be inclined to click off if you're smart but please hang around this video is aimed at stupid people and by the way I'm putting myself in that stupid people category okay I'll say that right up front but this video is aimed at couple of age groups people in their 30s 40s 50s early 50s who smoke it's aimed at them uh, it's aimed at their kids who might be in their early mid upper teens who don't smoke but that age group is pretty much in danger of becoming smokers and then for the folks on here that are a little bit older that are my age um, I want you all to hang around and watch it too whether you smoke or don't smoke everybody whether you smoke or don't smoke I want you to watch this video because it doesn't matter if you smoke or not you know somebody that does you know somebody who has kids that are the right age to be smoking say hello to the chicken back there behind me um, so, smoker or non-smoker, please watch the video and maybe you can share it with somebody. Now, like the video title says, this is about smoker accessories. I, uh, had to do that with the title because the algorithm for YouTube, if you put smoking or tobacco or anything smoking related, they think you're promoting smoking and they will block your videos. So since I do some videos about my Oklahoma Joe offset smoker, I figure smoker accessories will get me by on the title. We'll see. <laughs> um, smoker accessories, you know, if you smoke, you, you need to understand that cigarettes and a lighter or pipe in a lighter or cigar in a lighter is not all you need. There's some other accessories that go along with smoking that you really ought to be aware of if you're a smoker or if you're ever even thinking about being a smoker. And I just wanted to do a little video making all of you smokers and potential smokers aware of the accessories that you're going to have to have along with your cigarettes and matches or cigarettes and lighter. Um, first accessory is let's see let's go with these two smoking will cause diabetes smoking will make diabetes worse if you are if you have it and then start smoking and if you've got diabetes if you're like me you're real lucky in that your diabetes is easily controlled I don't have to ride the needle and give myself insulin shots my diabetes is pretty well controlled with pills two pills got one here called Trigena I was on another one called metformin until first of the year when I had my liver resection surgery and metformin hammers on your liver really hard and the doctors and I decided that my liver had enough problems so they took me off of the metformin Trigena replaced it and then there is Gliberide between these two, my diabetes is pretty well under control. But these are two accessories that you really need or will need if you're a smoker or something similar to these. Now, along with diabetes comes a thing called diabetic neuropathy or peripheral neuropathy. What that means is you've got nerves out at the ends of your arms and legs. You know, the periphery, peripheral neuropathy your fingertips start going numb 
your feet start going numb. I can stub my toe and don't even know it. And you can get blisters and sores on your feet that you don't know. That's why you have to inspect your feet real good because peripheral neuropathy happens for two reasons. Uh, number one, it kills the nerves at the ends of your feet. The way it does it is it cuts the blood flow in the small capillaries. No blood, the nerves die. So your feet get numb. And when you damage them, you don't know it. And then because there's no blood flow, the damage doesn't heal. And when the damage doesn't heal, it gets worse and worse and worse until it's too late and you start losing your feet. Well, that's easy to take care of. You just inspect your feet well every day. Make sure there's no damage. But also, it's a weird thing. Your feet are numb, but they hurt. They burn. Feels like they're on fire. They tingle. So another accessory as a smoker you're going to wind up with is this. It's called gabapentin. Uh, the brand name is Neurontin. Everybody's got friends that take Neurontin for one reason or another. Gabapentin is the uh, generic form. Um, and you take it up to four times a day. You can take up to 3,200 milligrams. I started off taking 200 milligrams once a day. I'm up to 600 milligrams twice a day. I can take up to 600 milligrams four times a day on the prescription I've got, and that can be upped if it has to be. But that's another accessory you're gonna need if you're a smoker. Because if you're a smoker, you're gonna wind up with diabetes and you're gonna wind up with diabetic neuropathy. And if you don't want your feet burning, feel literally feeling like they're on fire you'll have to take something like this up to four times a day oh by the way those first two they're just once a day so it ain't that bad now another thing that smoking does <coughs> smoking raises your blood pressure and in addition to raising your blood pressure it causes cardiac issues and I've got you might say I've got a few cardiac issues. I've got 10 stents. If you don't know what a stent is, Google it. Um, now, three of those stents are not cardiac stents. They're, I got one in my right carotid artery, and I got one in my right femoral artery, and I got one in my left renal artery, my left kidney. And then I got seven cardiac stents. And uh, the ones in the, cardi in the heart, the ones in the rest of my body, they're all because of smoking. Um, I've got great cholesterol. My cholesterol numbers have always been awesome. I eat healthy, believe it or not. I just smoke, which is unhealthy. And that deposits plaque in your arteries and veins, just like a lot of high cholesterol. So you wind up with stents as an accessory for smoking. And I don't guess they're all that bad. I mean, after 10 of them, it's kind of like getting my toenails cut. It's no big deal. But it is, it is a procedure that has to be done in the hospital. You have to be admitted and all that sort of thing. And, uh, but those are accessories. That's, that, that's 10 accessories I can't show you. But uh, isosorbide, besides being uh, blood pressure medicine, because I've got good blood pressure. Besides being a blood pressure medicine, isosorbide is also a slow-release um, nitroglycerin. So I don't have to sit around and wait until... I get angina pains to take a nitroglycerin. I take this once a day, every day, so that I've got a slow release nitroglycerin so I don't get angina pains. They still happen occasionally. I still have to take my nitro, nitro stab tabs, but very rarely. Thanks to this, an accessory for smoking. Now, smoking causes cardiac issues. Boy, we just went over that, didn't we? Cardiac issues tend to make fluid build up in your body in different places. If it builds up around your heart, that's called congestive heart failure. I don't have congestive heart failure, thank the Lord. But I do have fluid build up in different parts of my body. So this is called, and I am not going to try to pronounce it, um, maybe you'll be able to read, let's see... Maybe you can read the name right there. Even the nurses can't pronounce it. It's spironolalid. Everybody, including doctors and nurses, calls it aldactone. Once a day, 
I used to take it twice a day, but now I only have to take it once a day. So this is another accessory that you have to take once a day that's caused by smoking to keep fluid from building up in your body. Because nobody wants congestive heart failure. Okay. Another issue that you have when you have stents, and stents are caused by smoking, they're caused by other things. I'm not going to put it all off on smoking, but I'm talking to smokers here. Another accessory that you're going to need is this. Now, mine is generic. It's called clopinogrel. Um, you might have heard of it as Plavix. Think of it as STP for your blood. It's not a blood thinner. It's a blood slicker. It slickers up your blood so it flows through your arteries and specifically your stents well and doesn't cause clots. So if you've had stents, you know, those smoking accessories, here's another smoking accessory that you got to have. You got to have Clopinogrel, Plavix, there's a few other generic names. You got to have this to keep your blood nice and slick so it'll flow through your veins good and through your, specifically through your stents good. Now, along with the Clopinogrel, uh, Plavix, everybody's heard when you got heart problems, you got to take an aspirin a day every day. Now, clopinogrel is a blood slicker. Aspirin is actually a blood thinner. Um, this makes your blood thinner where it'll flow through your arteries better. Since they're starting to get clogged up because of the smoking, it'll flow through your arteries better. Helps prevent another stent from having to be inserted. Or worse, getting a zipper down your chest where you had to have open heart surgery for bypasses. So, there's another smoking accessory. Smoking also makes it where, uh, between the smoking and the diabetes, your body doesn't convert sunlight to vitamin D very well. And uh, because of that, even though I'm out in the sun most of the time, having a little farm, I have to take a vitamin D supplement directly because of my smoking history. Now, I'll be back in just a second. Okay, that covers almost all the medical accessories you're going to need as far as pills, things you put in your body. The only thing that's left is this little bottle that you'll carry around in your pocket for the rest of your life. It has nitroglycerin tablets in it. That way, if the isosorbi doesn't do any good and you develop some cardiac pain, you Take a nitroglycerin tablet, put it under your tongue. Wait five minutes, because it dissolves and under your tongue, sublingually is the, where you can get, without a shot, that's the fastest way to get medicine into your body. And you wait five minutes and see if it makes your cardiac pain go away. After five minutes, if the pain's gone away, you're good to go. If your pain hadn't gone away, you put a second one under your tongue. You wait five minutes. If the pain's gone away, you're good to go. If it hadn't gone away, you take a third one and you call 911 and get an ambulance to come pick you up because you're about to have a heart attack. So that's that's another pretty important accessory for smoking is make sure you always have your nitroglycerin tablets in your pocket. Carry them around everywhere you go. We're still not quite done with medicine, but we're done with everything you take in pill form. This thing, it's called an emergency inhaler. Smoking causes COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. That encompasses a lot of things. Uh, but specifically for smokers, it encompasses a thing called emphysema. Now, I'm gonna prove I'm stupid right here. My mother died in 1998. She suffered with emphysema the last three years of her life. For three years, she was on the end of a tube from a, running from an oxygen concentrator. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I watched my mother die from emphysema, and it is a slow, miserable death. So, I'm stupid because I'm still smoking, and here we are 21 years later. But anyway... Another accessory is your emergency inhaler 
you shake it up when you get really short of breath you shake it up take the cap off you stick it in your mouth and you push the button and it gives a little squirt you hold that in you breathe in when you do that and you hold it in for at least 10 seconds and then after 10 seconds you give it another little squirt hold that in for at least 10 seconds and you're good to go hopefully if you're not good to go you'll need a trip to the hospital still not quite done with the medicine I don't have the whole thing because this should be hooked up to what's called a nebulizer which is nothing more than an air bubble. you take this off have little vials of their prescription you take the cap off you put it into here you put this back on you turn on your nebulizer which is an air pump and this is like a uh, oh what's that called your mother used to turn on put Vicks, Vicks Vapo rub in it and turn it on in your room when you had a cold at night uh, God, puts moisture into the air I am drawing a total blank. But anyway, <coughs> that's what this is. The nebulizer pumps air in here, it bubbles in here, and it's a mist that comes out. Just like that mist I squirted with the emergency inhaler a minute ago, a steady stream of mist is coming out of here. And you just sit here. Like that until all this is gone and there's no more mist that comes out it's just air and when you get when you've done that you're done with that oh that's up to four times a day the warmer and the higher the humidity is the more often you have to do it we got summer during the winter I hardly ever use it that's a good thing that's an accessory I don't use during the winter but during the summer it's four times a day and it's a pain to have to carry that thing around so that's another accessory. Now here's a, you know, a couple of accessories that have no medicine with them at all. The first thing is emphysema. Besides, part of why it makes it hard to breathe is you build up phlegm in your lungs. Um, just like pneumonia. And to break that phlegm loose, <coughs> coughing is what breaks them loose and by the way that cough was not for show that was an actual cough phlegm is uh, coughing is what breaks phlegm loose but when you can't breathe very well you can't cough very well so you need some help breaking <coughs> breaking the phlegm loose that's where this comes in now you can't see this because it's clear but it's got a little paddle wheel in there that turns as you blow And that paddle wheel, as you're blowing, it real quickly stops and starts the air that you're blowing out and gives a little bit of back pressure each time it does. Y'all hear it? And that back pressure is like bang, 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 bang on your lungs. It's kind of like uh, if somebody cups your back, you know what cupping your back is? beating on your back with cupped hand and knocks things loose when you've got got pneumonia or other things that build up phlegm in your lungs well this does the same thing you just don't have to have somebody cupping your back you can do it yourself just sit there and use this for 10 minutes two or three times a day it'll help break the phlegm loose so that your coughing is productive because coughing doesn't do anything unless it's productive and brings phlegm up. That'll get it loose. Coughing brings it up. Doesn't that sound wonderful? But that's another accessory for smokers that you'll get to eventually. And then there's this little jewel. Now this I didn't actually get because of emphysema. But it does help me keep track of things. This right here... Um, when I had my liver resection back in January, before they put me out, they wanted to know how good my lungs functioned, so they had no 
so the um, anesthesiologist would know what to expect when they started putting me out, whether or not they were going to kill me or not. So I had to have this little test, and this is a test. This arrow right here, right there, this thing you breathe out into it. You try to keep this little blue thing right here between these two arrows. Don't blow so hard it's up here. Don't blow so soft it falls down here. You want it between these two arrows, and right here is how much air you should be able to exhale if you've got good lungs. Well, let me turn it around. You can see it from this side, too. Let's see how good a smoker's lungs are. That's blowing. I'm supposed to be sucking. This is taking air in. Tell us how good you can take air in. So let's see how good I can do. Let's get it over here. There, you can see everything now. Eh, about 2,800 or 3,000 when I'm looking for 3,500. So I don't guess that's too bad. Of course, I've already had all those medicines that I just showed you and used the chest cupper thing. So I'm breathing better than I was before I came out this morning because when I pulled this out to bring it out here, first thing I did was use it. When I got up this morning, here's what I got. That's not so good. That's why you take all those medicines. You know, all those smoking accessories, because that's what they are. They are smokers' accessories. Last but not least on the accessories, is this little piece of equipment. Right here. I've got diabetes because I'm a smoker. Now, diabetes can be caused Type 2 diabetes can be caused by things besides smoking, I know. But I've always eaten healthy. I don't have bad cholesterol. Everything about me is healthy except for two things. My liver sucks because of my drinking. Um, what is left of my liver, they took a third of it out. And diabetes. This is due to smoking. And this is called a blood sugar meter. Uh, this part of it pokes a little hole in your finger. And there's a little test strip comes out here. You stick it in the blood, and it tells you what your blood sugar is. This will keep you alive, because if your blood sugar starts diving, and it will, you take your medicine, it can take it too low if you don't have sugar to balance. If you have too much sugar for your medicine, or if you don't take your medicine, it can be too high. Too high is okay. My blood sugar, I used to live constantly with blood sugar level of 500, 550. 600 and I functioned pretty good with that but uh, now since I've started taking my medicine like I should um, it stays down around 120 where it should but it can dive um, I can feel it coming on when that's happening I can feel I get shaky and kind of semi disoriented and if I take my blood sugar it'll be down in the 45 50 range so that's a real handy piece of equipment to have around with all that stuff I've just shown you, I have not shown you the biggest reason to not smoke. I'm going to take you all on a little walk, and I'm going to show you why you shouldn't smoke. Okay. I'm going to walk up this road, you all. I'm going to walk up this road that y'all folks see those cars going by all the time. I'm going to walk about 50. I measured it. It's between 50 and 60 feet. We're going to take this little walk. And then we're going to come back and talk a little bit more. So, in case you can't tell by now, I don't think you should smoke. I think you're stupid if you smoke. I think I'm stupid for smoking. I'll tell you right now, the booze was a lot easier to get rid of than the cigarettes are. Because I've tried and tried and tried to quit smoking with absolutely no luck. But if you're not smoking yet, you don't have to start. And if you are smoking now and don't have a 
50 year history of it, maybe you can quit easier than I can. And if you're neither one of those, maybe you're somebody who knows somebody <coughs> who is in, because of their age or whatever, is in danger of starting to smoke. You hear how I'm breathing? I walked between 50 and 60 feet up the hill. That's all. And it's up a very slight hill. If I'd gone any farther, it gets kind of steep. And here I am trying to make a point about how I'm breathing after that little walk. And here comes a forklift. I hope he doesn't drop that stuff on me. There's a, there's a house being built up the hill, and uh, oh, he's taking some building materials. I can't believe he's going to go a mile with that forklift, but he is because that's how far the house is being built is. But anyway, the way I'm breathing right now is the single biggest reason you shouldn't smoke. You should show your kids this video so they don't smoke. And if you're not a smoker and don't have kids, but you want to stop from smoking, you should share this video with people who do smoke or who have kids who might start. So how do you like my smoking accessories? You think you want to go pick some up? Well, it's real easy. All you need to do so you can pick up all the accessories I just showed you. And so you can breathe after I, like I'm breathing after walking 50 or 60 feet up the road and back. All you got to do to do that, go buy yourself a pack of Winston's or Marlboro's or L&M's. You'll get there. Then you can have all the accessories you want to go with smoking. I'm whooped. I need to go inside and sit down. So I'm going to leave you with the same thing I always leave you with. And by the way, if you pay attention to this, it will help you with your smoking. Number one, the tomb was empty. Number two, he is alive. Now, Y'all go out and have a fantastic day, because once I catch my breath, I know I'm going to, and I don't want to be alone in it. I want y'all to have a fantastic day right along with me, and I will see y'all in the next video.